Welcome to another tutorial on 123D Design. This is Mr. Arsenal doing an advanced lesson on the uh, third class of tools we did at school. So let's begin. Okay, the first thing we're going to look at are the patterns. So in order to have a pattern, I first have to have something to pattern on. Maximize this guy. Okay, so when you select your pattern, it's going to ask for a solid and then a direction. So the solid, once it's fully highlighted, click on direction. Now because we have X, Y, and Z as different directions or different dimensions, I could use this way, X, this way, Y, this way, Z. So as long as I choose an axis, I could use this own shape as its point of reference. So I'll click on this one. Now I have the option of going back into the Z or right or left with my X. So I can say I want five this way, type in five, drag out five. If I want to go this way, I could, but as soon as I click on it, it resets back to three. So if I go up, it'll limit me to three. So now you can control your numbers if you so wanted to, but that is the rectangle tool, not tool, rectangle pattern. Okay. The next one, I'm just going to rotate around here and zoom out. This next one, we'll need to have something circular or some kind of point of reference. So I'll use uh, these guys. And I'll also use, sure, one of these. Why not? A torus. Okay. Now, when I'm doing my circular pattern, same thing. Select my solid, make it this guy. My axis is going to be the exact same thing as before, except because I'm looking at a circular pattern, it has to be the center axis. Now, these guys don't exactly have one, but this one has one going right down the middle as a skewer. This one has one going right down the center. So if I choose this as my axis, I can increase my count, and you'll notice that it goes right around my side right there. If I were to, say, choose this guy, And my axis is this guy right up here because he's above my current plane then it takes that as my axis you can see it in green highlighted right here that's the center point and now it goes in the y dimension so now it's spinning around vertically that way okay moving right along I'll just create a new file so I have a fresh board to work with. Okay, the next one is the path pattern. The path pattern is actually quite difficult, so I'm not actually going to include that on this one, on this tutorial. The mirror is quite simple. You can have multiple shapes. And when you select your mirror, all you have to do is select as your mirror plane exactly that, the uh, point of reflection. So if I chose, say, this guy's my point of reflection. Oh, no. Deselect. Mirror plane. Point of reflection is this guy. Then this becomes my center point. So if I rotate around to the left and back out a little bit, from here to here is the exact same as from here to here. If I did the exact same thing again with the mirror, and I said mirror this guy from this plane, Oops, I did it again. Mirror plane. There we go. Now this becomes my axis, and it'll mirror it at that away. If I do it one more time, take this guy as my solid. Mirror plane, it's going to be this one right here. Because he's higher, it'll flip it vertically, just like so. Now you can also use the object itself as the actual object and mirror plane if it has a flat plane or flat face you can work with. So I'll choose my solid as my solid, my, my box. My mirror plane, I'm going to select this face right here. And because it's touching, it now becomes a single object. Pretty cool. All right, the more advanced tools we're going to look at right now are all under the construct panel. So this next one's called sweep. What we have to do for the sweep is we need to have, if you read the yellow, 
a closed sketch or face of a solid, and a guided path. Now, just like with our fillet and our chamfer options, we can't over chamfer or over fillet. So when you have a path, you can't have the angles too sharp, otherwise it'll fold in on itself and the computer will give you an error. So I'll start by creating a path. I could have a straight path or I could have an angular path. It doesn't really matter. Let's go that way. Sure, okay, I'll stop there. Next, I need a 2D plane. So I could take a face of a solid, but that's kind of boring. So I'll just take a polyline and I'll make, I don't know, we'll call it uh, Sure. Okay, now what the tool doesn't tell you is how to use it. Now I can select my sweep and go profile this guy. My path is going to be this guy. And if it's close enough, the computer will work with it. Otherwise, it'll give you an invalid operation. Okay, which you did just now. What you can do to help it along is you can take your 2D plane, transform it, so that it becomes 90 degrees to the plane you're working on and 90 right there and then I want to put it right in front of my guided path so I'm going to rotate it so it's roughly in front of my guided path let's go a bit more for that one okay and then I just want to position it in front more or less now what's cool with the sweep tool is it's going to give you an extrusion of your 2D shape, but it's not going to extrude straight. It'll extrude along the path. So if I try this again, sweep, my profile is going to be this guy right here. My path is going to be this line. And as you can see, it swept that exact shape along my path. Pretty cool. Now, if you wanted to, you could always grab this uh, white arrow here and drag it back so you have a limited amount of extrusion. But the extrusion shape does not have to be 90 degrees straight up or straight back. Okay? All right. Next, let's look at the revolve. Revolve takes a closed sketch and it takes an axis. Okay, so in order to have an axis, I need to have a straight line of some sort. Now, I can draw one or I can use a different... Uh, line that's already existing like from my box for instance. So I'll take a 2D shape and I'll start drawing uh, we'll say right here, why not? And go to the top view so I can see it a little bit better. There we go, okay. So I'll just start drawing anything really, it doesn't really matter. And If I stop there and I switch to my spline I can always edit my path oh you know what I'm not actually touching so let's delete that I would like to edit so click on my current sketch there we go first point bring it out further we'll say yeah why not make it nice and obvious for the tutorial okay and exit now all I have to do is in order to make this a 2D shape, I have to now connect them. Sure, I'll go right there. Why not? Okay. So I have my 2D shape and it so happens I have a lot of lines to work with. So I'm going to select my tool, Revolve. My profile is going to be my 2D plane. So selected. My axis is going to be the center point, just like the circle and just like the uh, circular pattern we did. So the axis, I'm going to choose this line right here. Now we get this dial. If you select the inside dial, you can tell it how much you want it to revolve. Now it's taking it and it's revolving at 360 degrees. If you are very good with your mouse, you can make it go up to 360. Otherwise, as a shortcut, just so you don't have to repeat yourself over and over again, I like to just type it in and press enter. And just like that, my shape still has the same profile to it. But now it's three-dimensional. So if I select my profile or my shape now, I can rotate it 90 degrees and I can work with it as an actual 
shape. Pretty cool, very cool. Now what's also cool is if you have enough uh, material on your sketch, you can always use the shell tool. Let's see if it'll work. Hooray, it did work, awesome. And if I just pan out, I can hollow the outside. Now because this bottom part was flat, when I flipped it up, it worked. But if I look to my underside, because it's round, I wouldn't even be able to use this plane as a potential um, shelling point because it's not flat. You can see it's all curved there. And also, just as another point, my profile is still existent right underneath it. So I can delete it, move it, copy, paste it, create another one, up to you. Very useful for making chess pieces. Okay, the last tool is called the Loft tool. Loft creates closed sketches or faces of a solid. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have multiple 2D shapes or 2D faces and I'm going to add a skin to them, making them a mesh, so making them a solid. Let me show what I need. Okay, I right, first I need escape first of all because I want to draw my solids out first. So I'll start with the circle. Sure, that'll work. Then let's use uh, spline. Okay, now I'm just going to demonstrate with two shapes and then we'll move on to uh, why it worked. So when I rotate it, the best thing to do is because this to this won't actually connect, I have to put them parallel to each other parallel on a similar plane. So the easiest way for me to do that, to explain it, is to look at it this way. Right now you can't see them because they're on the same plane. But if I put them parallel, you could see them from a side profile. So I will Command T on a Mac, Control T on a PC, grab my rotation tools, and rotate this guy 90 degrees. Do the same for this guy. Nine degrees. Awesome. Okay. So now when I look at them, they're aligned. What's going to happen is I'm going to stretch a skin from this line, this face, this path, along to this one right here. So let's see if it'll work. Loft. Just have to select face one and face two. And when you look at it, we now have a 3D shape and the skin has automatically been connected to it. Very cool. Now the reason I did the two shapes first and not more, it's quite simple. Um, if you have too many angles and you're going from an angled polygon or figure to a curved one, sometimes it won't work because it has to match the points together. But if you have something that's roughly smooth to an angled shot or an angled piece, you might be able to make it work. So if I Exit and got out of there. Oops, let's let me put that back on. One, two, enter. There we go. Enter's better. Okay. What I'll do is I will draw a face with a bunch of angles. Close that. Select it. Command T to rotate. Bring it up to 90 degrees. 80, 90, there we go. Does that work? That works. Okay, I'm just going to bring one a little closer. Now because this is already a, a 3D shape, I can still loft it as long as I have a 2D shape to it. So as long as it's not a spherical shape, I can still work with it. So I'm going to loft this face to this face. Ah, there we go. So now we have a circle to that. But if I went this shape to this shape, it might not have worked. Just a little something to keep in mind. And that is the end of the tutorial. We did patterns and we did the three advanced tools under the construct panel, sweep, revolve, and loft. Hopefully you guys learned lots and uh, keep practicing. I'll see you guys next time.